right, and welcome to another episode of Live Arts with Mr. John. Today I have something that I hope is going to be exciting and fun for all of you. I'm going to be combining two of my favorite pastimes, which is creating things artistically and board games. Now it should be no surprise that I am a big fan, maybe a little bit obsessed with board games in a way. Um, even in some of our YouTube videos that I've done with uh, Visual Arts and uh, Live Arts with Mr. John, I've actually covered some of the rules and tips to actually recreate some um, art games. In past videos, we covered rules and tips to play A Fake Artist Goes to New York, a game of drawing and deduction. We've also covered The Quiet Year, a role-playing game that involves drawing and creating a whole world to explore by yourself and with friends. We've also covered Duplic, a game of drawing what you hear in a short amount of time. Now, all these are great examples of games that already have art components already into them. But what I'm talking about today is actually building a board game from scratch. So the rules, the components, all the little bits and pieces and designs that go into it. And let's face it, what else are we supposed to do during a global pandemic? So, whoa, 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 whoa. So you're probably asking yourself, why should I even do this? Why take the time and effort to make a board game? And the answer is there's a bunch of answers as to why you can do this or why you should do this. Number one is the creative ways that you can think about making certain materials that you need for the game. What stuff do you need to collect? Do you just print out stuff in color or in black and white? Do you just draw things on index cards? Do you take little pieces of scrap wooden bits and make little figurines or little bridges for your game? Do you take clay and make little sculpted pieces that are going to sit on there for some reason? Do you find cardboard or pieces of like thicker wood and make tiles that you're going to lay down and make little cities? Or do you mount stuff onto cardboard itself to make game boards? Um, you can even scavenge pieces from old games and try to use those for something else. Um, spare dice that you have, you can turn into stuff that you need too. So there's a lot of different options here and they can be as simple or as difficult as you want to make them. You can use construction paper, you can use glue, you can use markers, you can use Play-Doh, whatever you want. The limits and options are all up to you. The second reason is that designers have a lot of different games out there. There's different themes, there's different mechanics, there's different age groupings and player counts. And all these are important. So one example is that there's cooperative games. So cooperative games brings everyone together at the table and they all have to try to defeat the game itself. Um, some great examples of this are Pandemic. So in this game, everyone's gathered together and they're playing different people in the community, trying to stop the spread of diseases from enrapturing and taking over the globe. And this is a little bit too close to what's going on right now. So let's do a better example. All right, so something probably just as dangerous, but a little more exciting, we have Forbidden Island. So everyone's working together to try to collect all these different treasures off the island. But as the game progresses, the island is slowly sinking so that there's less of the board available to you and you might go down with the island itself. There's also dexterity games where you actually use physical dexterity to try to figure out who's going to win. And there's a lot of great examples of this. We have junk art where you actually have to stack all these little tiny pieces up on a little tiny platform and try to balance them and make the highest towers or um, do the quickest towers in a short amount of time. There's even deduction games, which try to challenge you mentally and try to keep your mind going to figure out some clue. Um, there's great examples of this. We have Mysterium. This kind of plays like Clue itself, where everyone is trying to figure out who done it and where and with what, except that one player is playing the ghost, and they can't talk for the game, but they can give you clues in the form of these abstract art piece cards that are in the game box. Now, honestly, I can go on for hours about the different kind of games and different kind of mechanics. But what it all comes down to is that designers have already done that. They have created so many different genres, so many different themes. And even the most skeptical of people that don't like board games or think that they hate board games will probably find something that they like if they actually just look into it a little bit more or play more games. So there's a lot of different things that you can create. There's a lot of different things you can do. And like I said, designers, they create these fun experiences for players. And in this case... You're the designer. Number three is that board games are learning experiences in a box. They can teach problem solving, critical thinking. They can teach mental deduction. They can teach 
math or certain subjects if they want to, if the game is based on that. They can teach you better reflexes and better dexterity if you're playing games like Jungle Speed or Flick 'em Up or whatever. They can teach so many different things. They can teach about advocating for specific rights. Um, they can even teach about quantitative easing. I'm serious. There's a game called Quantitative Easing. It's QE for short, and it sounds like it's the most boring game in the world, but it's actually a better version of Monopoly. Everyone plays their own country. Everyone gets to bid on properties that are going up for sale, and everyone pretends that they have a money-making machine that can generate as much money as they want, so it means that they can bid whatever they want. The game literally has no paper cash in it whatsoever. You just get a dry erase blank check, and you write the total on. And the trick of the game is that if you have bid the most money on all of your properties at the end of the game, you automatically lose. So there's a lot of problem solving. There's a lot of strategy in that game itself. And it seems like it'd be a boring topic, but it makes sense because if you make all that money, you reduce your currency's value for your country and your economy goes down. So they took a very boring subject and made a very tense and very interesting and fun game. Number four is the actual creative process of making the game itself. So you might be asking yourself certain questions when you're coming up with the rules, like, does this rule make sense? Is this game for younger people? Is it for older people? Is it a game that can play four players or just two players? Um, is this rule too overpowered? Do I need to change that? Um, and these are all things to consider. You can also need to consider what kind of pieces and little bits that you actually need and what materials you need to gather to make them. So it could be a very fun and creative process, both mentally and both physically by the stuff that you're actually building. So how do you get ideas for a game that you want to build? So there's a lot of different ways to go about it. The first one and probably the easiest one is just play more games. Um, play a whole bunch of different games, play a bunch of types of different games, play with different mechanics, play it with different people. And pretty soon you're going to play these games and you're going to realize parts of them that you like or parts of them that you enjoy and parts of them that maybe you'd want to recreate. So playing more games, great way of trying to figure out an idea. Another great way is to just base the game on interests that you have. Do you like robots and zombies? Make a game about robots and zombies. Do you like space travel and unicorns? There's intergalactic unicorns, the board game. It's out there. Make it as weird as you want to. Make it as funny as you want to. Most likely, the more weird and the more funny it is, the more entertaining it's going to be, and more people might enjoy it. I also stated before that some games are born out of necessity to learn something. So maybe you're struggling with something. Maybe you're in school and you're really trying to learn a specific detail and you really don't know how to do that. Try making a game out of it. Make a game so that you can design it and you can learn that thing. And not only that, you can teach it to other people by playing the game and make it more interactive and more interesting and more fun than just reading a book. If you're really stuck for ideas, you can always turn to the internets. So there's a lot of games that are available for print and play. And what this means is that a bunch of designers, they get together, they design these games, and maybe they want ways to play test them before they start manufacturing them. So they'll release free print and plays that you can find online that all you need is maybe just a printer and some scrap paper and maybe some cardboard to paste it to, and you have a ready-made game. And some of these are great. And even if you don't have a printer and you just have the rules and maybe an idea of what the pieces are, you can take those rules, you can take that, and you can use different materials to build those pieces for yourself if you can't print them out. Um, there's even Escape Rooms in a Box. Um, Unlock uh, by Asmati Games has all the PDF files that you need and all the pieces and things that you would need to build your own escape room at your own home. What could be more fun than that? So I'm not going to go into details about how you should make your pieces or what you should do, but I am going to give you some helpful tips and tricks that I've learned from creating my own little homemade games. So I hope these are a little bit helpful to you. And the first one is, is not to go too crazy right at the beginning. When you're first coming up the rules for something and you're first starting to make pieces, use blank pieces of white paper and just, or even index cards and just cut out little pieces, maybe color them in with a marker if you need to distinguish colors or players on the board, draw a little board, it doesn't have to be perfect, and just test the game. Find a family member or a friend that's in your COVID bubble and just play it and test it first. 
and be prepared. While you're playing, there might be some confusion with the rules. Maybe they're confused about something and they're going to have questions. Can you answer that? If not, that might be something you need to change. Um, and all this is great because you're not really wasting a lot of um, valuable materials to make the game. You're instead just using bits of white paper and just coming up with something. And they're easily replaceable and you can easily rewrite the rules and you can go on and play it a couple times until it makes sense. And if there's something that seems overpowered or something that seems like it's missing, figure out what that is and write it in. Or maybe there's something in there that you don't need at all. Take it out. So maybe you've tried a couple games now and you want to finally start actually building pieces. You want to get to the fun part and actually sculpt things out of wood or sculpt things out of clay or build a cardboard component. Then by all means, this is the time to do it. If you have a, a game that looks like it's going to play well, start building those pieces. Start making a more colorful board. Um, do it on a canvas and do like a painted board. That'd be awesome. Um, paint little wooden cubes or use popsicle sticks or lids or whatever you need to come up with a lot of different options for what you can build for those pieces and be ready to kind of come to some other conclusions when they don't work you might be working for hours using air dry clay and make this little tiny piece and then you come back to it and it's a bunch of dust on the table because it dried too soon or something and it just cracked be prepared to be like okay this did not work what do i do next with that being said don't be afraid to mess up Again, this is something you're making for yourself and possibly to enjoy with your family. So don't be afraid to mess up if something goes wrong. If you're making a piece and you accidentally color outside the line or you make something out of clay, like I said, and it crumbles, or if something's just not working, then take a step back and think about, well, what can I do instead of this that'll give me my result and make it better? Another thing to remember is this game that you're making is going to be as simple or as complex as you decide to make it. So you can get a challenge out of a game that has maybe one board and just 10 pieces, just as much challenge, or maybe just has 16 cards as a game that has over 100 pieces and a rule book that's about the size of a dictionary. Fun fact, dictionaries, um, for those of you who are too young, were books that used to store every word that was ever spoken and the definition to them. Think of it like Google, but it's portable, but you'll most likely break your back while you're trying to carry it. So I'm gonna wrap up here, but before I do, there's just a couple of little quick tips that I wanna just remind you of. When you're working or when you're creating something, try to pick a surface that's gonna be easy to clean and something that's not gonna be in the way of anyone else that might be in the house. Um, if you don't have a surface that's necessarily that easy to clean, you can always make one. So maybe having a, a piece of cardboard, or in this case, I think this was the backing to a, an old poster um, that they sell with the frame and stuff. Uh, I use this, as you can see, for a lot of cutting, a lot of gluing, and a lot of painting. And it's a nice little portable surface that I can just kind of clean up or wipe off really quick and just store away somewhere once it dries. So just be cautious that you want to have an area that you can work and clean up very easily. Another thing to consider is that scissors and X-Acto knives are great utilities for cutting out lots of tiny little pieces and lots of things that you need to cut to the right shape to put into your project or whatever game you're making. They are also very dangerous and can cut things that you didn't want them to cut. So when handling scissors or utility blades or X-Acto knives, be very careful. Um, if you are young, do it supervised or have someone do it for you. Um, just always try to be safe uh, when you're building stuff. And if you feel that it's not safe to use these, use something else. You can just tear pieces of paper if you have to and do other different things to try to get the things that you need. Another thing to remember is don't go crazy buying materials that you don't need. Um, when, especially when there's things that maybe you can reuse around the house that might be easier or simpler materials like cardboard uh, or paper, like pretty much every household has. The other thing is if you have old board games that have pieces that don't have homes, you can use those and even just scavenge around the house for little bits and little trinkets that might be useful in your game. On the topic of reusing items that you can find throughout the house, it's also important not to be a thief about it. So maybe your mom's bird earrings would make a great piece for your bird-themed game. 
but she probably would like them and would probably not like them covered in glue and paint. So make sure you ask people before you take things and if they say no, then you're just going to have to think of another way to make that piece. And that's it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you get some great ideas. I, I hope you share some of those ideas with us and maybe show some of the games that you created um, with um, our organization. Um, whatever you decide to do, just remember the most important thing is to stay creative and to have fun with it. And if you're not having fun, then maybe you can try something else to do to pass the time. But I think you will have a lot of fun with it. And until next time, take care.